I am approaching this as an end user. All right. And for those who didn't go for a run this morning, we're about to do a sprint. I've just written way too much. There's just way too much stuff that's so cool. So first is going to be a little bit about project management. The second bit is going to be about the QGIS operations. All right. So this is why I need these workflows. I need to meet deliverables. I need to get rid of the risk. Um, I need to still have a good reputation and I need to look at the economics of everything because I work for a consultancy and I want the engineers to come back and ask me to do their mapping, all right? These are my risks. I'm not gonna go through them, take a picture. <laughs> okay, so I really want to look amazing to the client. So what I suggest you know to do is to research your client, work out how to deliver them to make them look amazing to whoever they're delivering to. Appreciate their experience. You know, they may not know what GIS is, they may know what GIS is and use the term, oh, I've just got a simple job for you. Um, or they use GIS and yeah, that's a whole lot of fun. Um, inform them about everything. So send links to example. And why I say send links is so you can start them on the journey. So they get an idea of how they wanna visualize. And we've had a lot to do about visualization here. Listen. Listen to them, don't tell them, listen to them, okay? Um, be confident about things. You know, say yes a lot and, or oh, that may well be possible, or I'll get back to you after this about it. Take on the challenges to develop the skills. Use your network. You have the ability to use your network and to do your Google searches and to do everything else on that. So use that. Work from the output and deliverables back, work out what the look and feel is, and get them to supply as much information as they can and get them to supply that early, not the day before, okay? And here it is really, really, really handy to have a pro forma to gather their need, you know, and make sure that you understand that cost frames the effort. Don't be going and doing a whole lot of stuff there that you really enjoy, okay? Um, also, um, get the due dates for your draft and your final. And this not helps you deliver when you need to do it. It helps you juggle your other projects. We multitask. You might get bored with another one. We, and so we just know when we have to deliver this one and when we've got a little bit of space to move on, okay? And check your tech speak. I know so many people have been turned off because we start talking about jargon and that. Don't use it, they don't know. They just know that you're gonna do pretty pictures. All right, and use this. This is one of the things that you can use here in order to inform them and to get them on that journey, such as this Flickr channel. Okay, this is my method. Okay, these are my communication parameters. I put things in boxes, I do it. Physically, and I do it, um, what's the word, intangibly or, or whatever. Um, so that I, as soon as something comes in that I've got that information, I can put it in the box and I can go back to it when I need to do. It's not just floating around somewhere and I need to go and find it. I don't have time to do that. Works when you're working on multiple tasks, okay? My capture tool is OneNote. Um, uh, there are other ones out there, such as Bear, Soho, Simple Note, Evernote, Laverna, Google Keep, Turtle. Um, and what you see up here is my structure that I use. All right. Start as you mean to finish. Expect to hand over everything, even though you haven't agreed um, to do it. You need to balance that with the time constraints, and I'll probably repeat that later. You need to be able to understand what you've done a month after the project has finished. Think about it that way. Okay, these are my breadcrumbs. This is my tasking sheet. This is my most important one. This is where I know where I've put everything. So I've got the date. I've got who I communicated with. I've dumped their email in there, that information, and then on the other side, I pull out the tasks from that and then I put little check boxes next to it. There's so many things you can do here. So you can link in things, you can highlight things. And I also use it when I have lots and lots of maps to deliver 
and I cu they come back with edits. So I just had an extra column on put in what it is that they want um, me to edit. Okay, so we've done the prep. Let's get to the fun stuff. Mm. Maybe not, maybe. All right, okay, data, don't be sloppy. You know, work out whether or not it's a deliverable or not and just, just be tidy enough, but don't, waste, don't be wasteful in areas that will sacrifice your deliverables. Stick to your naming conventions, stick to your structure. Sew it all up in the end. Um, I do, I've recently been doing this a lot. I've been sewing it up into a geo package um, via package layers in the uh, processing toolbox because it grabs the symbology as well, okay? Then after that, I will add in the metadata here and I just save it as a default. Branding, this is just the best thing about QGIS. I love, 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 love this side of things. All right, don't use user profiles. <laughs> I thought that would be really cool. I could do a user profile for a client and everything. No, nah, it's for dev, it's for training and those who were in the workshops would have seen that. Okay, use a base template instead. Okay, for your, sorry, I've just lost all my bits here. So that's the user profiles. Okay. Um, for your palette, or for your client template, um, just think about your layout and how you set up your composer, your logo and etc. And you can use those bits and pieces there in order to grab off your, um, to grab your colours. Okay, now this is the palette and this is, um, will be in options um, and you can set up multiple styles and um, you can add and delete to it as well. Um, and you can also, you can do this in various places. So this is where you can use, um, you can grab your colours from the logos as well using the eyedropper. Oh, sorry, I'll go back. Um, and also, um, you can import, um, I'll just go back, you can import your um, colours as well and you can save the colours out so you can use them and you can chuck that into your base template. For your style, um, use style manager tags. Um, you can use your layer definition and also you can use um, your property layer database as well and your defaults. So what's happened here is that it's just not showing up everything that it should do. Okay, build your style into your geo packages as well and look at your source documents. Again, those inspirations. Um, and also for your um, project setup, Work out who your audience is, who the primary, secondary is, what the intention of the product is. You don't want to give them something a little bit over, you know, um, that's a little bit sort of complex. You want to work out how simple that is. Yep, and again, get your colours and get your graphics. All right, variables. This is my favourite bit. Once I discovered these, oh my God, life, I didn't have to do the boring stuff anyway. Any, anymore, you know, I could just build that into everything. You can build that into your templates, okay? So we do this in order to save time. We enter the information once and we sure we don't miss out on that peripheral info. When you've done all that work, you've got it off, you know, you're under pressure and then they come back and go, oh, you've got the title wrong, you know? That's very annoying. Okay, so you've got your global ones and you've got your project property ones. Um, and you can add in things here such as text. And then you can add it in over into, um, where are we here? Into your layer styles. Sorry, I'm just finding it really hard to see the notes.
No, it's just I've lost all, all my little things. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's all right. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go back a little bit. You can access it project, you can access it the layer, you can access it at your options. You can enter everything that you need for all the work regardless of the client and you can be sure that there are many more. So your types of variables, your global, you want to use these. This applies to all of your QG QGIS projects. And this comes back under settings and globals. So that's these ones. With your project one, um, this is good for adding in project numbers and things specific to your project. And you can also add in a particular label font and then select them to override in the layer styling as well. I'm back on track. In the layout as well, you can add extra ones in here. So if you're in your layout and you think, oh, I want something to repeat through my base template, you can just add it in there and, it, and then you copy out your base template and then it'll reach back to that. The other thing as well that you should do is um, you can add in your file path to your layouts um, in your templates. Um, and that happens, um, and I think that happens, and that'll come back into your layout manager as well. All right, symbology. Um, you have to think about your functionality versus effective communication. And now I did a really, really good sort of scale on that. Um, so you can go from your cyan and your apple and your yellow and that's sort of like your machine le learning type stuff. Uh, or you can come back and you've got your massive, massive design and then you might just lose everything then. You need to find the balance there. Okay, so here are some symbology hacks to save your time. Use your base layers. Save them out as layer definition files. This is really good when you haven't got access to internet, when you want, don't want to use um, a WMS-based tiles. We have really good ones in Queensland, but sometimes you want it to be your look and feel, and particularly if you want to be a little bit artistic. Okay, you can individualize it, individualize it, create it, save it as a layer definition file. You can add it to templates, drag and drop it from one place to another. It saves so much time. With your palettes, you can build in, like I said before, via your projects or your plugin. And you can see you can have, um, for your company, you can have them. So up there, you can see I've got the SMEC ones. And then above that, I've got my project ones. And I can also do that to override everything. So let's just say I have an orange, the SMEC orange across the one. And then branding, marketing comes back to me. Oh, we've changed our SMEC orange. I just need to change it in one place. And because it's linked back, from the layer style manager, you can see the little yellow link above that. It will change for all of them. All right, style, use your tags. Mousy, mousy's gone. Okay, use your tags. That's gonna be really handy for you to pull things in that you need to. Um, what else have we got? Once you create something in your geo package as well, uh, before you push it out to package layers and it's sitting in a geo package, you can um, click on save as default. Um, you've also got your ability as well to um, save optional um, symbology. So if you right mouse click as you see here, that you can have your de default or then you can create and add a new one and you can just completely change how you want that to look and you can build that into your um, layer themes as well, your map themes. Ooh. Okay, um, yep, this is where you save to your data voice. And also don't forget you can copy and paste symbology. Love that bit. Um, and this is also where you can use your variables as well to help with your symbology. Labels is great. I love this tool. I just learned about this the other day. Get, get your um, map window to the scale that you want, the extent you want. You click on that little red um, button up the top there and that's going to tell you which labels are not going to wash well when you put it to a layout. So then you can go and you can change those. Um, and what do we got here? Oh, you can do layer blocking too when you're in your layouts. Have a play around with that. I'm sorry, you can't see this one here. Um, so these ones are the map themes. 
use them to um, help you cycle through your base layers and to set them up. Um, all right, so here you can see, this is our, my template design, and you can see everything here that is in purple, they are all variables, okay? This is again um, the map layout. Now I have named this um, geology and that comes as a variable directly from here. So all I need to do if I've got um, somebody who comes in who wants to change it, I just need to change it in the map layout and then push it out. I don't have to go in and do the graphics. And this is what I was talking to before. This is where you can set out your template paths. And so this will automatically select when you go into your um, uh, layout manager. Where are we up to? Okay, these are the templates. Another thing. Um, this one is an overarching one. You see the legend down the bottom? And then I've just got to do the themes. And this is via my map, um, my map themes. And I just cycle through my base that I've created. Um, I don't have to change that legend down there. But um, my legend up the top will just cycle through that. So that's less work again for me. Don't forget to use the extent. This is automated. Use it. Don't draw. Don't write. Do, do that. These are the plugins and processes. Take a picture. Um, some of them are not necessarily um, available directly. Um, but the other one on the right that I use a lot, so I use Slayer and I also use the Smek plugin, which is our bespoke plugin that you can get a core developer to create for you. And also um, this is a locator. This is where the locator um, is down on the bottom left of your QGIS map. Use that. That's going to save you time as well. And a lot of this was crowdsourced. Finally, make your own plugin. All right, if you're going to encourage people to come and work for you, you want them to work in your, your way. So as you can see here, here's Rubens. Everybody thinks Rubens painted everything. He didn't. He had a workshop, okay? So this is your way to have your own workshop in your style. Oh, my God, I'm puffed. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. That was that was very inspiring. <laughs> Any question? Anyone? Please give me the look. No go ahead. There you go. The back. Okay. Did I see someone here? No? Oh God. No. Any question? <laughs> Who is that person? <laughs> All right. Any question from anyone? Okay, I will start. Uh, I don't know how to make a plugin, Emma. Uh, I love styling maps and know how to export to PDF and some other files, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, where should I start? You should start by perhaps asking somebody to run a workshop on that next year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Or you can employ a core developer to do that or to mentor you to do that. Use your network. You've got one now. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? Anyone? Uh, I'm guessing, do you have a Esri background originally? What pushed you across to QGIS? Yep, sure. Um, you can check my YouTube talk last year from Fossil G to find out more about that. But basically, it was money. Um, I learnt um, es Esri through the Australian Army and I was pushed in that and it was very difficult. And then I moved over into environmental consultancies, engineering and software development and... Um, so it was money mainly, but it was also in the end, there were no gremlins. I could get my work done really, really quickly. And I knew I could get it done in time. Yes, yeah, stability. That's the word that I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> All right. No, it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? From that side, the other side. I'm so sorry it was really, really, really fast. I just had so much to do. Um, but when it all comes out, just go search it and have a go and um, just find your way through it. There are so many tricks and hacks. And um, please add lots of yours as well in the Telegram or on Twitter. Okay. 
if you could just pick one, what's your all-time favourite? Variables. <laughs> You're on. Are you on the uh, Map Time Oceania Slack group? So we can hit you up for more details about this later. Absolutely. Please do. Excellent. Thank you. We've got one more minute. One more question. Uh, when working with a team of people working with the Sorry, same I can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, when working with a team of people with the same, trying to keep people on the same versions, etc., a, a template's the mechanism you use to keep all those variables and, and things in line across a team. Yeah. The other thing you can do, um, if you're talking about versioning um, in regards to which QGIS they're using then I would think about a plugin because that can control that or no, it can't control that. It's, but it's something that you can set up. Um, in regards to getting everybody pushing out the same, then use a template, use a base template and you can set them all up um, and set them up via your, um, was it, um, your options and your settings, I think, or your project properties, one of those.